Hello again. This time we're going to learn how we can assign data types to values or literals in RDF data. We've spoken about uh, the turtle format before, and this time we're going to explore more how we can actually assign data types, as we said. Now, remember that. Uh, you know the idea of the triples and we have subject, object, subject, predicate and object um, and remember that we mentioned before that a subject and predicate must always be URIs and the object or the value can be either a URI or maybe a literal so usually the non-URI value of um, an object is technically, technically called a literal remember that it's a literal uh, that's a technical term for it now usually or from what we've seen before, if you remember uh, this data set that I have opened before that usually um, so we have subject, predicate and object or value and the value here is a string is explicitly a string because we are specifying it between the qu double quotation marks but the value can be even more than that, it can be more than a simple string so we can actually assign a specific data type or a tag maybe to identify uh, the text maybe as being for example you know the text is being in a particular language so for example in that data set here we can say for example that this is you know in English if this value is in English or is in French or is in Spanish or this one here we can specify a language to make it more specific um, so as we said before these literals they can have types and they can be named now typed literals so it has actually that type assigned to it usually the data types are from the W3C's XML schema part 2 specifications so we have them already all we need to do is just use them and why do we actually have or why do we actually add data types well this is quite useful because if a program knows for example about a value yeah if a program knows a certain value is a number then we have more information about that value now because we know it's a number then we can use it to do maybe some uh, some mathematical calculations yes or if it's a date then we can use it to compare dates so for example if it's a string then we can use it for some comparison re and, and some other processing uh, 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 operations yes so whenever we know that whenever we know the type of a value then uh, we can do more things with it so that's the idea of having more about data so we can do more with the data itself now we spoke about RDF serialization before uh, my preferred one is turtle because it's, uh, it's easily read by humans um, um, so every RDF serialization has you know its own convention for specifying data types yes and what I'm using here what I'm going to use here is just from or using the turtle data types yes so we'll, we'll open a data set now from the book our beloved book which is this one as you know we are going to use uh, a, so, so, uh, a simple example from there in the turtle format so the convention used there is the one that is uh, specific for the uh, for the turtle format you know the how to actually specify a data type so let's open this file example 033.turtle from the book and let's have a look at what it looks like example 3 3 which is this one here you can see here uh, that's a comment as I said before that's a prefix so now prefix prefix and if you look at the data now we have a certain item coming from here remember these URIs there can be something there or there can be nothing there yes remember this there can be something or there can be nothing this is just the URI to distinguish this word chipped for example if we use it from any other place to make sure that this one or to know that this one is coming from this place and if, 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 we, if we use the same property with the exact, exact same name elsewhere at least we give it its prefix so we know it's coming from a different place so we can interpret that in its correct context anyway now uh, we have an item that subject property or a predicate and now we have the object is a value and we are assigning it a value date so hat hat and then uh, we, we're giving actually the full URI yeah we can use a prefix or a full URI so that's a date now for this item here we are giving it a value of integer from XSD which is this one here so we're using the prefix in the normal way 
uh, notice the prefix in turtle that starts with the at and then you the prefix name the colon you provide the URI and then you end it with the dot as you know the end of a triple is always a dot in um, um, a turtle format so we're giving it that type integer from XSD the one that I mentioned in my slides here remember all this material is taken from the book from here yes now uh, again for this one boolean hat hat xsd colon boolean and then hat hat xsd colon decimal we ended with the dot or the period now if we do not specify the uh, data type again either using using the full uri or using the prefix if we leave it like that or the dot of course then our processor our for example if we run a sparkle query against this data set our Sparkle processor or processor will actually assume that this is actually a string or will try to guess what type it is. If you put it between quotes or don't specify the type, then it'll assume it's actually a string. If we leave it without quotes, it will assume that this is an integer. If we leave this without quotes and we we'll, we'll remove the data type, then it will assume that this is actually a Boolean because a Boolean can be true or false. Likewise for the um, for the real value. Hope that makes sense. The processor or the Spark processor will actually make assumptions about data type if we do not explicitly specify it. Now, like the prefixes, uh, you know, used elsewhere in the data, the XSD prefix on data type must be also declared. So we declare the XSD uh, prefix here, and then we can use it in the data using the hat hat, and then you know double hat XSD, the usual way of using the prefix. But this time it's actually after the literal to specify its data type. Now, uh, if we omit the quotation marks from a turtle literal, a processor makes certain assumptions. Uh, I've, I've just explained that, that it will make some assumptions about its type. So if it's a true or false, then it's um, a Boolean value. If it's a number, whether it's an integer or a floating number. This means that a Sparkle processor would interpret the following the same way as the previous example. So the following, I, I mean, this file here. So if I open this file, number 34, which is this one here, as you can see, number 34, this file and this file are exactly the same. They have exactly the same data. What we're doing here, we're ignoring the quotations, we're ignoring the data type, and we're leaving them like that for the Sparkle processor to make the guess to what the, ta what, you know, the type of this data is or what the type of this literal is. If we run the exact same Sparkle query on th these two files, we will get the exact same results. Why? Because these files are exactly the same. Uh, we're just leaving, you know, guessing the data type here to the Sparkle processor rather than explicitly specifying it. I hope this makes sense. Thank you very much. Remember that to, if you want to run Sparkle queries, then please go and watch my Sparkle tutorial. It's uh, available in my YouTube channel. Apart from that, thank you very much indeed for watching, and uh, um, I'll see you next time.